Hey everyone, it's Kathy Koliakova with Pepper at Marketing, and welcome to another edition of my online newsletter slash blog article, all being done by video. I am still a little tied up with my fractured elbow here, and uh, I'll be happy to head to the surgeons this week and find out what's going to happen after they take the staples out and this temporary cast off. I have no idea what the future is going to hold for me, so I'm very interested in finding that out at the end of this week. But as I've been recuperating here at home, I've been working a little bit. My team has been fabulous helping out um, and doing a lot of stuff, more than they're used to doing, which is always great. But I've been spending a little more time on the lazy boy and a little more time on my phone and you know, scrolling through groups that I'm part of. And one thing that I really noticed um, this past week was that you know, people definitely in Facebook groups and other groups that you're part of are going to offer advice on, you know, ideas or tips or people are looking for advice and always a ton of great sharing going back and forth. But I was looking at some and I really noticed that a lot of people that are trying to figure out um, how to sell a course online, uh, e-learning is becoming a really big industry. I think I saw some stats recently where it's almost a $325 billion industry. It will be by 2025 phenomenal. And people are really getting into offering courses and trainings or even memberships online. So definitely there's business owners out there looking to try and decide what system or platform should they use. Now, a few weeks ago, I shared a video on why I made a move to Kajabi for my courses from Teachable. And a lot of it was based on the specific needs that I had in my business and what I had set up. And I think that's something that a lot of people forget about when they're choosing a system or a platform to use for their business. So I wanted to share some tips with you today on what you should be factoring into a decision when you're making that move or leap to choose a system to put and host your online course on, or if you're going to upgrade and change the one that you have now. Now, the one thing that I want to say is that most of my decision making would all come in and factor into the 10 basic foundations of your online business that you want to have set in place. So this is something I always look at and I always consider in what my decisions are. Um, your 10 foundations, just to give you a quick recap, are your website, your SEO and your keywords, they're your blogs and blogging activities, your email marketing system that you have your Google Analytics, your lead magnet and the lead generation page where people can sign up for that lead magnet, as well as the thank you page that they get when they do sign up for it, your social media profiles, and then of course, your marketing plan to use all of that to market your business to build and grow and scale it. So when you're looking to add in courses or online courses into your business, you want to look at those foundations and figure out what do you have, then you wanna factor in the systems that are out there that you might be looking at and interested in, and you want to consider them all. And this is something I think a lot of people skip over and forget about when they make that leap and make that decision. So there's a couple things that I would always look at when we're looking at helping a client do this, or I'm helping a student work through this in the Insiders Club, whatever it might be, you always have to look at what it is that you have now what it is that you're going to need. And the biggest thing that I think a lot of people forget about is what skill and ability do you have to manage what you're gonna be creating and building? So when we look at these, the, the biggest things that we factor in are the website, what kind of system are you using and what kind of platform are you hosting on? That's really important. The next one is your email marketing system because you do not want to have everything disconnected from you want to have you don't want to have your course system over here and your email marketing system over here and nothing ever talks to one another zapier is definitely something that can help you connect them all but it can be a lot easier for you if you look at a course system that actually integrates easier with your email marketing system and then e-commerce is another one so how are people going to be paying for your courses online so those are the big factors that I would always look at and consider when making that decision. Your website system, your email marketing system, what kind of e-commerce system are you gonna have when you do this? And then what teaching or online learning or e-learning system or content management 
system are you going to be using for that? There's all sorts of words people use for it these days. How are you going to host your online course is what it comes down to. And how are people going to pay for it? So you always want to look at those as the different factors that you're considering when you make that decision. So you can be in all the groups that you want to, and you can have people say, oh, use Kajabi, or use Thinkific, or use Teachable, or use Learn Dash, this WordPress plugin, or member sites, or whatever it might be. But you always have to look at what have you got now? What can it integrate with? Are you going to have to change anything? Because that can be a big deal. Let me tell you, um, when I made the switch in December, I hired someone to move my courses from the Teachable system I had to the new system took them over a hundred hours to do that. So that's something you'll have to look at as well. Could I have done it? I probably could have. I could never have done it as fast as they got it done and up and set up in as fast a time. But I did do a lot of the sort of tweaking and the finishing off of it. But could I have started on my own? Probably I could have just because of the skills that I have, but that's not necessarily something everybody can do. And I really noticed this a lot in these groups that I was part of in the past, in that I, the groups that I'm part of in the networking I've been doing in the last week as I've been laid up with my arm. And I've really noticed that there's a lot of people out there. Um, I've just, you know, I'm launching to next week and this isn't working and I don't know what to do. So the ability that you have to manage and use that system is also something else that is really important for you to factor into this because if you're not going to be able to handle it and manage it on your own, you're gonna to have to find somebody that's gonna be able to help you. You want to deliver the best online course that you can to your students, so you need to make sure that you're factoring in everything that you can when you make those decisions to get out there, get it created, launch it, put it out there. Um, for Canadians, another thing that we have to factor in is charging uh, tax to other Canadians. Not every business has to. I do with mine because I've been charging tax from day one when I started, but not every business will. If you're a business that it is going to be something you have to do, then you're probably going to have to make another decision or two on what systems that you're going to be able to use to make that happen as well. Because I don't charge tax to Americans who buy my stuff, but if you're in Canada, then there is a tax that has to go on there. So that is something else that you're going to have to figure into this as well when you do this. So I guess my, my lesson for you today is if you're looking to jump into the online learning industry and get courses out there and help more people by helping them with self-study courses or membership programs or courses where they go through, it's a combination of both. I definitely think when you're making that decision, you need to slow down, map it out, figure out what you have, what you need, what you can do, what you can't do, and then make your decisions based on that. So I hope this little quick video tip helps you out if that's something that you're thinking about. And if it's not today, then it's something maybe that will help you in the future if you're looking to build your own online courses as well. I definitely um, love my time with my students that I have in my mastermind program for blogging and writing and in my insiders club as well, which is our strategy uh, and marketing review and coaching that you get with me for your marketing. So those are definitely places I, I absolutely love the time I spend in there and with the, with the students and participants there, helping them move their businesses forward more and more. So it can be really fabulous when you have a really good topic that you are so uh, well-versed in that you're great at teaching it and sharing it with other people. But remember, when you want to make that decision to swap and go into the online learning industry, make sure that you factor in some of those key areas that are important for you to make in your decision on what system to use and jump into. If you have any questions about making that decision for yourself, wherever you're seeing this video, definitely post a comment below, ask me a question. You can always go to my Facebook page at facebook.com slash pepper at marketing and ask me there as well. Or you can find me on Instagram at uh, pepper at marketing also. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them out there and hopefully I can help maybe guide you in a little more steps towards making that decision for you and the best one that you will make. I hope this has been helpful for you and we'll probably be doing another video or two in the next few weeks. I'm definitely learning how to live one armed and how to uh, adjust what I do in everyday life to get through and do the simple things like uh, un undoing a lipstick and putting that on or opening a jar, different things like that. So it has been 
a very interesting and humbling challenge for sure. So I'm wishing you all the best if you're looking to get into your course and start your own course as well. And again, any questions, please feel free to let me know by asking them. Have a great day, everybody.